In today's video, I'm gonna explain why eating less is not the answer if you're trying to lose body fat for good. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Bella from ProPhysique.com and today I got a great question from right here on my Instagram direct message. The Instagram question goes something like this. Hey, why is it bad to eat less than 10 times my body weight in calories? And guys, this comes from someone who has a lot of experience as a coach and has also gone through this journey myself many times of losing body fat. So I wanna show you exactly how I do it. Go to my Instagram direct message, send me your questions if you'd like me to address it in a video. But let's start today by talking about the science and the research and the anecdote. There are all these schools of thought on losing weight. And if you're watching this video, you're probably saying right now, why don't you just eat less? Well, I'm here to tell you that is not the answer, okay? While yes, we do need to be able to control our diet and understand our nutrition habits, I wanna talk about some research that's come out this year. In fact, something that just came out the other day, and I wanna talk about something called the fidget factor. You guys familiar with the fidget factor? I'm gonna to point to this study right here that talks about how they overfed a population of people and a large group of the people actually didn't gain weight. Why? Because as they overfed them, they found something odd happened. They involuntarily moved more. They call it fidgeting. We're all familiar with the term of fidgeting. We might move our finger, we might bob our foot, but for some of us, these fidgets can burn up to, and this research actually showed, 700 more calories a day than a person that doesn't fidget. So why is this? Well, it's probably genetically encoded into us. And when you hear some people say that it is harder for them to lose weight, it may actually be harder for them to lose weight, but why am I so obsessed with this 10 times our body weight in calories number? Because as a coach, I've seen it over and over. My update system, which is proprietary to my company, tracks a lot of data. And over time, I've come to notice that once my clients get their calories, say they're 130 pounds, and I gotta get their calories down to 1,300, 1,200, 1,100 to get ready for a bodybuilding competition. Now, we're not talking about normal people, guys. We're talking about people that get shredded like this. So I do have to push them to extreme measures to ensure that we are winning our competition but I also have learned how to take care of them and ensure they're able to continue losing weight even when I have to take them below 10 times their body weight in calories. However, the general population doesn't understand this concept. They simply jump on a diet of 1200 calories, 1000 calories, 800 calories, whatever the calorie range is, and they just stick with that. What I do with my athletes, my clients, and the clients of Pro Physique is we make sure that they are getting regular refeed days, meaning, we are bringing their calories up, bringing their carbohydrates up to restore glycogen, to restore performance, to restore energy, to restore digestion, to restore sanity, so that we can endure longer stretches of fat loss. Also understanding that the calories that you use to get body fat off are not the calories you have to keep to keep it off. That's right, we can bring your calories back up gradually, we can drop your cardio back down, your activity back down, and so something kind of magical will happen during this period. The fidget factor is so real that it's something that I ha think has a profound impact on people being able to lose body fat while I'm giving them what is called a diet break. There are periods of fat loss where my clients will stall. They'll be on, let's say, 1,200 calories. They'll be on an hour of cardio a day. And what I'll do is I'll drop their cardio down to 30 minutes, I'll bump their calories up to 1,500, and they'll lose weight that next week. And when I ask them what changed, they slept better, they started doing things that they had stopped doing. So guys, the fidget factor also relates to life. If your calories get so low that you stop doing the things that you normally do, you stop going for walks, you stop playing ping pong, hell, you might even just stop doing the laundry. I find that people start to conserve energy when their calories get too low. So the next time somebody tells you it's silly to exercise, to do cardio, tell them they're wrong. You cannot just eat nothing and lose body fat and sit in a chair. In fact. The chair sitting may be what's the biggest problem with our society right now. We tend to spend eight to 10, maybe 12 hours sitting in a chair working. Hey, we gotta make that money, right? Well, it actually shows in some research, and I'll show you an article right here, this one that just came out, talks about Americans traveling to Europe, eating the same foods that they normally eat at home, their pizzas, their ice creams, their alcohol. They come home and they've lost weight and they don't understand. Is it the ingredients of the food? Oh no, is it the seed oils? Oh, is it the sugar? No, it's not because they're eating the same foods. What are they doing when they're in Europe? They're not sitting in a chair. They're walking for as much as four hours a day, involuntary walking, sightseeing around Europe because we're not in our routines, okay? If you look at a society of people that are more sedentary, 
the obesity rates skyrocket. If you look at a population of people where they are required to move more throughout the day, these areas called blue zones, the average age is over 100. They have less incidences of knee pain, of back pain, of depression. Why? Movement. Movement is the key, guys. I've been saying it for a while now. I've talked about it in a lot of my walking videos, but yes, we need to understand how to restrict our calories. But if you have to get your calories so low that you start to conserve energy, research is going to show you're going to see that you actually have less quality of life because your calories are so low. Guys, I want you to try something. I want you to get up and walk multiple times per day. A little magic trick I have with my clients is take a 10 to 15 minute walk after every meal. That's right. Every time you eat, instead of sitting back down and that food just digesting, get up and do some movement. You'll put that food to use. Your brain will get some activity. And I'm telling you guys, it's hard to explain, but I get up every morning at 5.30 and I walk. And I've been doing it for one year and my life has gotten better. And I wanna help you guys make your life better. So start looking for opportunities in your day to move more. If you can't fidget while you're sitting in your chair working, make time to get out of your chair and go for a walk multiple times per day, get up and do more things. I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to look like this, guys. You don't all need to have the passion that I have around bodybuilding and wanting to lose body fat and build muscle, but your quality of life can be very dependent on your approach to fat loss. Low calorie sedentary fat loss is a dead end. All right, guys, let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you tomorrow.